Hey guys, it's DJW0071. Um, I just wanted to check in with you guys and just let you know that um, I have really, really been blown away over the last probably three years um, by my relationship with my wife, um, who I've been with for the last 17 years. Um, actually for 20 years, we've been married for 17 years. Um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely a physical guy who, um, is always, you know, looking for that physical connection with my wife. Um, I have, you know, been attracted to her physically since we were dating, you know. I wouldn't have put a ring on her finger if I didn't think she was beautiful. Um, and I think that, you know, for the last 17 years, um, <clears throat> you know, we've had a lot of ups and downs in our marriage. Um, and I'm just talking about the, like in the bedroom, you know. Um, and, you know, I think for the, in the very beginning, everything was just passion, you know, white hot passion. We just were so in love with each other. We were all over each other every day. And there was just so much joy, you know. And then I think, you know, kids started coming along and things had to kind of slow down. And um, we have four children. So um, we were pretty busy in that department. And, and that's just something that has to happen. I mean, things have to slow down. That's just... Um, you know, the, the, the pregnant wife cannot keep up with um, as much physical lovemaking as she would if she wasn't pregnant, and especially after childbirth and nursing. And, you know, there's just a lot of stress that goes along with that process. And there's a lot of joy, too, but there's a lot of stress, too. I mean, there's, I remember our first child um, didn't nurse well. Um, a lot of tears were shed, a lot of frustration trying to make that happen. Um, so, you know, there was a lot of testing in our relationship, but, you know, I think that as the years kind of went on, um, bedroom time between she and I was, was still relatively consistent, I'd say, you know, maybe once per week, but it was pretty low on the passion scale. So, um... It was more like, oh, this is a duty that, you know, we need to get done. And so I'm going to go surface you in the bedroom now. And I would be like, <clears throat> you know, I would obviously enjoy having my wife. But at the same time, knowing that there's something missing, you know. Um, and then... You know, I did pray to God and asked him that he would help me, us, you know, to improve our love life, our, our sex life. I asked that he would um, just help that and to make it make it better and more fulfilling. And, um, and it's so crazy the way that God answers prayer because over the last maybe three years, we started deciding that we were going to um, we were going to take some time away, you know, just the two of us to go, go away. And it was on our anniversary before COVID. So this would have been, I believe, 2019, the summer of 2019. Um, so during our anniversary, um, we went to Hampton Beach and got a room. We got a sitter for the kids, a family member who stayed with the kids for a night, two nights maybe. And we just went to Hampton Beach and just enjoyed each other for those two days. Um, we were um, just so into each other for that for that time, and we kind of got that flair back for our for each other, you know, apart from the kids. And um, I think God was teaching us then that you know we need to love each other um we need to love god first and then we, we need to love each other second and then the kids come after each other 
and then you know we put ourselves under them so we're actually loving um each other first and that that's actually good for the kids that's good for the family um so you know i um started to initiate like essentially like project wife chase <laughs> so i was um you know I, I i'm kind of an artist so i was drawing pictures of my wife i drew a few art pieces of her that I like revealed to her during that time and I made some poetry and I shared that with her um, and you know just just started to chase her in every way that I could um, without strings attached you know um, trying to tell her how beautiful she was trying to tell her how much I love her um, opening doors for her, opening the car door for her, um, pulling her seat out so that when, when we go to a restaurant, you know, she doesn't touch her own seat, um, taking her coat for her, just treating her like a princess or a queen, um, and I'd just be at her service. And then, you know, just because I loved her and I kind of figured, you know, you can't love your wife too much. So, um, you know, it would make you know, buy her flowers, you know, walk them into her work and just like leave them at her desk, leave her a note at her desk, um, make time for her and, you know, write, write stories and whatever I could do to just like tell her that I'm thinking about her and I'm, and I love her. And I'm telling you men, like <laughs> you, those of you out there that are frustrated that you're, you know, you're, you're not getting the attention, that physical attention. Um, like you gotta chase your wife. Your wife is always behind you. Uh, she's lagging a little bit behind you in that physical attraction department. And you gotta get her there by chasing. And they want to be chased and they want to be, you know, adored, you know? So that's what we, do and I think that if we don't do that um, you know that's that's how marriages start to kind of fall into duty and even complacency and then even worse could be like you know maybe they start trying to find that somewhere else and that would be um, obviously sinful and and really negative but no one's perfect, you know? So how men, the thing about men is that we receive that love physically. Most of us, not all of us, but men receive that physically. Like, you know, if you want to love your husband, wives, like, you know how you can do that? You can just hang on him, you know? When he comes home, touch his hand, you know? Give him a hug, you know? When he sits next to you, grab his arm and just hang on him. Like, he loves that. He loves that. He will drink that in. And, you know, I know that some wives are probably thinking, but if I do that, we're going to end up in the bedroom. <laughs> but it's like, you know, that may happen. That is true. You may, you may end up in the bedroom, but don't think about it like that because if you end up in the bedroom it will only because it will only be because you're both so in love that that's like the natural consequence of where it will go um but you know i think too like f women you gotta you gotta understand that your husband loves your body like he married you for a reason he's attracted to you he wants to see your body he wants you to own it he wants you to be confident in it. He wants you to put on some lacy thing and strut your stuff in front of him and lure him, seduce him. And even if you're feeling bad about the way that you look, he doesn't feel that. He is only attracted to you. His attraction for you is on the top of the mountain. Like he doesn't, you know, if he married you, like to him, you're the most attractive person in the world. Like he has built his attraction all around you. Um, he fantasizes about you. He wants to see you naked. He wants to see you 
Men are so carnal. They want to see flesh. They want to see all of your girly bits, every bit of it. They want to see it. They want to touch it. They want to be teased by it. They want you to own it. They don't, they don't want you talking down about yourself. They don't want you hiding yourself from them. They don't want you um, so ashamed of yourself that they can't have you. Men want to be able to have their wives. And that's why the marriage vows include to have and to hold. Like that's, I mean, men need to be able to have and hold their wives. And they, they married you part of, I mean, a main, the main attraction for a man is that physical, carnal stuff, you know? And it's very, I guess, kind of gross in a lot of ways, but that's just the way it's, that's the way that it turns, that men get turned on. A lot of it's visual and physical. So, um, and women, you just, a lot of, you like, you'll, you'll get to the visual part too and to the physical part too, but it doesn't start there. Your emotions, it's, this is what I've learned over the last few years is that the women need to get warmed up emotionally. And that is with that, that connection, that love connection, that, that cherished feeling that, that, um, you know, your man is really thinking about you. Your man finds you attractive. Your man is, you know, smitten by you and is so, you know, respecting and honoring of you. Like he, he wants to like serve you and like clean up the house for you and light candles for you and pull, pull chairs out for you, open doors for you and tell everyone, this is my beautiful wife. You know, when you're introduced to people, like they treat you like, like that. That's, that's what warms a woman up. And then, you know, she can't resist at that point. Like you're going to end up in the bedroom. She's going to be hanging on you. She's going to be, you know, touching you, you know, rubbing your shoulders, you know, giving you that foot connection under the table. Like all, all of that stuff is what men need to see. And it's like, if one of the partners does that to the other, like they're going to get what they need in return. It's just, you can't love your partner too much. You can't, you just have to love them, love them, love them all the time. Love them as much as you can. Like <laughs> my wife and I, um, like our love life has been absolutely insane over the last three years, I'd say. Um, I mean, insane. We, we, we probably end up in bed lately. We've been in bed every, every single night. And it hasn't been a duty or a chore. And it has been hot, passionate, like sweaty. Like it is intense lovemaking. And that is unbelievable. Like we're both like on cloud nine. It's been, again, clearly a God thing. Like this is not who we were. Even when we first were married, we, we were very passionately in love, but not like this. Like this is another level and it's just, you know, and the kids, they, they see mommy and daddy love each other. They, they are smitten with each other. They're always, you know, together. They're always talking. They're always like helping each other in the kitchen. They're always, you know, doing everything together. And they're just, they're just in love all the time. Like, could you imagine growing up in a household where you're both your parents are just in love with each other? They're just smitten with each other all the time. I mean, that's good for everyone. That's good for the whole family. That's why I say, like, it's important to love your spouse above your children because it's just like loving God most to start. Like, everybody benefits when you love God first. And everybody benefits when you love your husband or your wife um, second. Everybody benefits. The whole family benefits. When you love him or her um all of that kind of flows down and like everyone kind of reaps the benefit from that because the, the whole house is, is happy and connected. So anyway, thanks for listening. I just felt like I really needed to share that. And I feel like there's somebody out there who needs to hear this right now. Um, and I really feel like this is a gift for a lot of married couples. If you haven't been able to, or that you're maybe you're stuck in some kind of dry valley 
with your wife and or your husband and you're just you know either bored or you know there's no fire there there's no like romance there's no um there's very little love between you you're mostly just roommates you know trying to get through life your teammates and that's what you are um like there's more to marriage than that and you know if if my wife and i can do this uh you know consistently after 17 years anybody can do this any couple can do this this is i mean i, I just i have to share it so um Anyway, thanks for listening, you guys. Um, I'm going to peace out.